What's up everyone, it's Mark from Silenced Tech and today it's time for my final setup tour. Over the past months I've worked hard, saved and at times pulled my own hair out, but it's all been worth it. You've seen every step of the build process in my setup refresh series and finally I present to you my 2018 insert keyword ultimate gaming setup. Okay guys, just before I start, please remember that my gaming setup series, a setup refresh, will never die because I'll just keep refreshing my setup until the cows come home. And I'm hoping at some point going into 2018, I can at least water cool one of my PC builds, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's jump straight in. My quad monitors are a dream come true, featuring triple Acer XP27HUs at the bottom and one ASUS PG34HQ ultrawide at the top. The Acer panels set me back a lot of money and they support a refresh rate of 165Hz which in turn gives ultra smooth motion in games especially when you turn on G-Sync. Together they have a combined resolution of 7680 by 1440 Pairing them up to create a triple monitor setup like this is mind blowing. Tearing up Project Cars 2 is jaw dropping, FPS shooters magnificent, triple screen gaming is fantastic on any set of monitors but when it's as smooth as this triple screen gaming really is taken to the next level. All of my bottom monitors are being powered by my first PC and I'll get into the specs on that monster a little later on. Up top is the awesome ASUS PG34HQ, an absolute beast, my favourite ultrawide of all time. One of a very few to have a refresh rate of over 60Hz at a resolution of 3440 by 1440 This monitor is seriously demanding, topping out at 100Hz. The monitor's extra field of view gives a unique experience, especially in third person games. But Mark, I hear you cry, how on earth do you play games on a monitor stuck up in the air like that? Well my dear friend, cop a load of this. Okay, maybe that was a little over dramatic, but I used to have an ultra ride in my previous gaming setup, and it was completely pointless it even being there unless you wanted a bad neck. So I set about and I was determined to find a wall mount that would allow me to bring my overhead or my ultra ride down to eye level and I finally found this one from Ergotron and it was seriously expensive but totally worth it. So yes, the mount is amazing, but we're not finished there. The ASUS Ultrawide isn't even connected to the same PC as the Acer panels. It has its own dedicated PC, making the quad monitor setup overall extremely flexible. You can game in every way known to man, using surround for driving sims, a single 16x9 monitor for FPS games, a 21x9 Ultrawide for example for an extra advantage in third person games or, get this, I can even turn my setup into a dual setup for two people by swinging the ultra wide over to the left or right and straightening up one of the 16x9 Acer panels and I've even got a spare chair in my cupboard for this very task. 
A question that I know a lot of you are going to ask is where are all my cables? Well, I connected a power adapter to all four monitors, then plastered that and about eight other DisplayPort and HDMI cables into the wall. I covered this pretty extensively in my gaming setup series, Setup Refresh, so definitely check that out if you had time, but overall it created a stunning floating effect. Moving on, let's check out my audio gear. Underneath my monitors is my USB DAC made by Creative, the Sound Blaster X7, a real nice bit of kit that delivers pristine audio and I normally use it for when I make YouTube videos. And I pair that with a set of AKG 702s, a real nice flat sounding pair of headphones, great for monitoring audio levels. To the right of the X7 is the Katana sound bar, and it's the reason why my setup doesn't look cluttered. Even with a massive desk area, I found it extremely difficult to fit a pair of speakers and my PC on the desk at the same time. I used to have a set of white speakers on my desk in my old setup, which resulted in me having to relegate my PC to the floor, and it was a great shame having such a nice PC that just collected dust underneath my desk. Looking further across is my Focusrite Scarlet Solo that's been custom painted white to match my setup. The mic I use is the Audio-Technica AT2035 and I've had both of these for ages, for the money they've been worth their weight in gold. Gaming headsets, generally I use a wireless headset due to the fact I can't stand having wires dangling from my head while I play games. After all the headsets I've reviewed, my favourite headset of all time is Logitech's Artemis Spectrum Snow. Not many, if any, pack a punch like these, especially for a wireless headset. Battery life isn't the best, but the software and customization is fantastic. And the headset I use for my second PC is a set of Corsair Void Pro in white and black of course. Paired with a stunning ST100 headphone stand they certainly look the part in the corner of my room. Now let's take a look at my mouse and keyboard. Currently I have Corsair's K95 Platinum, a fully mechanical keyboard featuring Cherry MX Speed switches. Overall this is now my favourite keyboard of all time due to the fact it has stunning white custom keycaps on it. Although I do love using my ROG Claymore from ASUS due to the fact it has a modular numpad allowing me to swap it out to the left side giving me much more room for my mouse. Speaking of mice, currently I have Logitech's G900 set up, but I use that mainly for editing and to generally look badass on my desk. But for gaming, I actually use two completely different mice religiously. The first being Zowie's FK2, and the second, which I've recently got and I'm still adjusting to, is Zowie's ZA13. The fact that these mice are so light, weighing around 80 grams, and have a perfect shape for my hands, make both of these the greatest mice I've personally ever used. My keyboard and mouse game doesn't end there though, when I'm using both PCs I also use another keyboard and mouse altogether, and both are wireless with full Bluetooth capabilities, allowing me to switch between both of my PCs seamlessly at a press of a button, and they're the MX Master 2 and G613 from Logitech. They are both great for using also in front of my 4K TV as well, especially since the battery life on both lasts for ages. Onto my desks, they're actually dining tables, but as long as it has a top and four legs, anything's game right. I bought two of these and ended up cutting one in half for my PCs, and I was extremely determined, as you can tell, to get my PCs off the floor. A link to them to the desks will be in the description, but just to note, I don't believe they're available anywhere apart from the UK. I also added a set of chests of drawers to keep my desk as clutter free as possible. The first drawer has things like memory cards, USB sticks, charging cables, you name it. The second drawer is where I keep my camera and underneath that where it gets real funky is where I keep my HTC Vive controllers and headsets and no Vive has ever been this well cable managed as it's actually plugged in and ready to go just sat in my drawer. Now if I ever want to use my Vive I can just take it out with the controllers and I'm good to go and it's fully set up and ready to use and I'm extremely glad I did this as before setting up my Vive was an absolute pain and so was packing it away.
With all that out of the way, it was a lot to cover, it's time to check out both of my PCs, the main events and run through the colossal specs. First up is my Fantex Evolve build and I'll just show you some awesome shots and run through the specs. The PC features Intel's i7 6 core 6850K overclocked to 4.5 GHz. Calling the CPU is Corsair's newest AIO, the H115i. There's 8 DIMMs totaling 64GB of Dominator Platinum DDR4 Special Edition Chrome, and you literally can't buy this RAM anywhere anymore. And in total, the RAM is probably worth about a grand. And they also have custom white tops from Cable Mod on them as well. And they're all hooked up to an ASUS ROG Strix X99 motherboard. GPUs are two custom painted white ASUS ROG Strix 1080Ti's in two-way SLI. Plus I've custom painted ASUS's ROG high bandwidth SLI bridge and for storage I have one 256GB Samsung 960 Pro M.2, I have one 500GB Kingston SSD and a 2TB Western Digital Blue hard drive. Powering the PC is Corsair's AX1200i, a 1200W PSU that has never let me down and adding some crazy effects is Corsair's LL series RGB fans my favourite out right now. And this is the PC that's connected to my triple monitor setup. Cable management is on point inside and outside the case. I've drilled a hole right behind the PC to route all the cables neatly out of sight. My second PC that's connected to the ASUS Ultrawide up top I recently built and the specs are crazy. Built inside the best looking case of all time in my opinion is the Corsair 570X in white and it has to be white. Specs include Intel's newest i7 6 core 8700K overclocked to the promised land of 5 GHz and that's been cooled by Corsair's other newest cooler the H150i feature featuring their first ever 360mm rad. The build has 4 DIMMs of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 RAM in white of course and they're all attached to MSI's flagship motherboard the Z370 Godlike Gaming and it really sets this build off nicely. The GPUs are two MSI Trio 1080 Ti's in two-way SLI and I absolutely love the light bar that runs along the outside and I also have a custom painted MSI high bandwidth SLI bridge. For storage I currently have a 256GB Kingston SSD, a 120GB SSD and a 2TB Western Digital hard drive. Powering the PC is Corsair's white RM850X, a 850 watt power supply, and lastly, there's six stunning Corsair LL RGB fans. Taking a quick look across my room, I have a curved 4K Samsung KS75000 55 inch quantum dot TV and it's generally used for times when I rarely get to sit down and chill. I also have a HDMI 2.0 cable running behind my wall because I drilled a massive hole and then it runs underneath my carpet up to my second PC allowing me to experience some PC 4K HDR gaming on this excellent TV and I also have a black PS4 Pro and generally it's used to play exclusives like the Uncharted series and also I cannot wait to play The Last of Us 2 when it comes out. Lastly, I almost forgot going back to my main setup. I have various figures and posters around my setup, giving it a little bit more personality. And overall, they bring the setup together nicely. Anyway, guys and girls, I guess that's it for my final setup tour of 2018. All the products I will link down in the description. A massive shout out to MSI, Corsair, Asus, Cable Mod, and Logitech. As always, my name's Mark from Silent Tech. I hope you've enjoyed my 2018 setup tour. Goodbye.